Hi, I'm OWC Steven, and I'm here to talk to you today about creating a backup plan. A backup at its basic level is having two copies of the data in different locations. The first copy is going to be on your main hard drive, the stuff that you use every day. The second copy, your backup, is going to be on an external hard drive, another internal hard drive, or in the cloud. Anything that is not on your main hard drive. Why does that matter? Why should I have a backup? A backup is very, very important for when your main hard drive fails. This is not a question of if. Hard drives will eventually fail. When your hard drive fails, it's a matter of either having your data backed up in a separate location and being able to move on from that hardware failure swiftly and without any downtime, or if you didn't back up your information, you're looking, first of all, at quite a lot of data loss. Important files like family photos, media libraries, your music and videos, financial records, your doctoral thesis, all of these things you keep on your hard drive. If you don't have a backup, the best case scenario is that you're going to be looking at a hefty bill from a data recovery company, and the worst case scenario, it's all gone. Something that could be avoided entirely by having and maintaining a backup solution. The first and most basic backup method is drag and drop. Say you've got an external hard drive. You've got the hard drive hooked up to your computer. That hard drive will show up on your computer as an icon. With the drag and drop method, you take the files that you want and drag them over onto the external hard drive. This action creates a copy of the information on your backup drive. The information will still be on your main hard drive, but now you've got a backup. Some variations on the drag and drop method include burning a copy of the data to an optical disk, such as a CD, DVD, Blu-ray, or using a cloud-based service, such as Apple's iCloud, Carbonite, Dropbox, or a myriad of others. The benefits of the drag and drop method are that it's simple, it's inexpensive, it doesn't require any specialized software, and it's convenient. Some of the cloud services also offer features such as auto-updating files and access to those files from anywhere. On the other hand, the drag and drop method doesn't create a complete backup of your system. It only creates copies of the information that you decided to drag over, which means that in the event of a system failure, your operating system, applications, preferences, system settings, anything that you didn't specifically drag over, you'll need to manually reinstall and you'll need to spend time getting everything back to where it was before. Another method to help protect your valuable data is through the use of a hardware solution such as the newer Tech Guardian Maximus. The GMAX here is a RAID 1. RAID stands for a Redundant Array of Independent Disks. A RAID consists of multiple drives and the data on those drives is distributed in a variety of ways. The GMAX is a RAID 1. It has two drives inside of it, so every time data is written to the unit, it is immediately written to both drives. Using a RAID is beneficial because should one of the drives fail, you'll still be able to access that data from the second drive. Then you'll be able to replace the drive and the RAID will be rebuilt automatically. Keep in mind though that while RAID offers excellent protection against hardware failure, it really shouldn't be the only location for your data. If it gets corrupted or deleted, those changes are automatically copied to the entire RAID. Also, since it's only one unit, it doesn't protect against anything that could physically damage it such as fire, flood, landslides, tornadoes, volcanoes, meteor strikes, alien abduction, cougar attack, or just dropping it off your desk. So it really shouldn't be the only location that you have your data. You can also create and maintain backups using dedicated backup software. These applications will help you automate and manage your backups. For Mac users, the most popular and convenient of these is Time Machine, since it's been built into the operating system since 10.5. With Time Machine, the first time that you run it, it makes a complete backup of your entire system. After that, it runs regular incremental backups, which will save the changes that have been made since the previous backups. Time Machine can also be set to run automatically, which means you don't have to worry about remembering to keep your backup up to date. It's searchable, and you can use it to retrieve older versions of files or files that have accidentally been deleted. And since it's built into the operating system, it's seamless. You should also keep in mind 
that since Time Machine maintains multiple versions of the same file in its backup, the overall backup is larger than some other systems, which means you're going to need a larger hard drive. While Time Machine does create a full backup of everything on your main drive, including applications, preferences, and system settings, it's not a bootable backup, which does mean that in the event of a drive failure, you won't be able to immediately get up and running using your Time Machine backup. You're still going to need another drive with a copy of the operating system that you can restore your Time Machine backup onto in order to get everything back up and running. Also, since Time Machine was built into 10.5, if you're running an earlier version of the operating system, such as 10.4 Tiger, you're going to need to look somewhere else for your backup solution. Another type of backup is to create a clone using specialized cloning software, such as Carbon Copy Cloner, Super Duper, Data Backup, or a host of others. Cloning software creates a one-to-one -one copy of all of the information on your main drive. This has a number of benefits. The main advantage is that this clone is bootable because that one-to-one -one copy includes things such as your operating system files, preferences, applications. So if your main drive goes down, you're able to immediately boot from your clone and get up and running. Also, since this is a one-to-one -one clone, the backup drive is only required to be as large as your original drive. You can also create multiple clones and rotate them out, but we'll get to that in a moment. A potential drawback of this setup is that it's only as recent as the last clone. So if you're running a scheduled backup and the interval isn't frequent enough, if your hard drive goes down, you could lose all of that information that hasn't been backed up. Since this is a one-to-one -one clone, every time the application runs, you're transferring a lot of data. So depending on your system, it might not be something that you're able to run in the background. Also, if you're running a scheduled backup, you're going to want to check on it from time to time just to make sure that it's actually doing its job. Each of these backup systems has its own advantages and disadvantages. So, if you use a combination of them, the advantages of some can counteract the disadvantages of the others. An example of this would be using a RAID system such as this Guardian Maximus as your time machine backup or clone. So you've got your separate copy of the information, and that copy has some redundancy built in to protect against hardware failure. Another thing you can do is maintain multiple backups at the same time. So you could have a time machine backup and a clone, which means that in the event of a main drive failure, you can immediately boot from the clone and then use Time Machine to pull over newer files. We already know that a backup is a copy of the data in a separate location. We've talked about creating the copies, so what about the location? Well, the location doesn't have to be right next to your computer. It could be in a different room, a different building, or in a safe deposit box somewhere. In fact, the more copies in the more locations, the better. That way, if, say, your house catches fire, you don't have to worry about jumping through the flames to grab your external hard drive. All of your important data will be backed up safely off-site. And if you're going to be maintaining multiple backups, you'll want to rotate them. The newer tech Voyager makes this process really easy. Your main backup will be in the Voyager, being updated by your cloning software or time machine backup or whatever it is that you're going to be using. Your second backup will remain safely off-site. Periodically, you'll rotate them, taking your up-to-date backup, taking it off-site, and bringing in the older backup to be updated. We've thrown a lot of information at you so far, and you might be wondering, what's the best backup solution? Well, the real answer is that the best backup solution is the one you actually use. You could have the most complex, elaborate backup solution in the entire world, but it won't do you any good if you don't actually use it. So whether you're dragging and dropping, using Time Machine, a clone, or a combination of all of these things, the important part is that you choose a backup solution that's right for you and stick with it. Speaking of which, I have to go back up my stuff right now, so we'll see you next time with more tips and tricks.